Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at start, stop, continue. Now, many people struggle to both give and receive constructive feedback. Why? Because feedback can be uncomfortable. It can be uncomfortable to challenge your team's performance and it can be equally as uncomfortable to receive feedback on your own performance. Now, because of this, many managers put off giving frank feedback. They know that feedback can improve their team's performance but fear that if it's taken the wrong way, it will have the opposite effect and reduce performance. So wouldn't it be great if there was a simple tool you could use to overcome these challenges and as a result, make your team more productive and increase collaboration? Well, Start, Stop, Continue might be just that tool. Start, Stop, Continue is a simple feedback tool that can help you continually improve over time and it works at both an individual and team level. It takes less than 20 minutes to perform. And the result of the exercise is to generate three lists. So first we have a start list. These are ideas that you don't currently do, but that it would be good to start doing. Second, we have a stop list. These are things that you're currently doing, but you should stop doing because they're not adding any value. And finally, we have a continue list. Things that have been working well and should be adopted as part of your team's core activities. So let's jump in and look at each category in a little more detail. So first we have the start list. Now this contains fresh ideas that you'd like to start doing. And these actions should focus on improving existing processes, creating new processes, reducing waste, improving the quality of what you produce, positively impacting how your team feels and improving how your team collaborates. And you should include not just technical actions, but also behavioral actions. Now, questions to think about to trigger ideas for your start list include, if you had a new person join the team, what would you have them work on? Another question is, if money was no object, where would you invest? Ultimately, you want your start list to be a set of fresh ideas to consider trying. Next, we have your stop list. Now, your stop list contains actions you're currently doing that need to stop. Stopping these activities will free your team up to do more constructive activities. Actions that need to stop are those that consume time with little reward, distract you from your core purpose, are inefficient, negatively impact how your team feels, and are outside of your core competencies. Now, again, remember to include not just technical actions, but behavioral actions as well. Questions to think about to trigger ideas might be things like, what activities do you constantly put off? Why do you never get to these activities? What activities do you think could be eliminated from your working day? And finally, is there some activity you do that you think is a waste of time? Now, clearing out the dead wood activities can be like a breath of fresh air for your team. Your team will feel more productive and feel like there is more purpose to their work. Finally, we have continue. Activities to continue are those that are working well, but are not yet part of your standard practice. Now, commonly these activities will have been introduced in the previous iteration of the start, stop, continue loop, and they are working well, but you've not yet embedded them into your standard practice or standard procedures. Now, questions that can help trigger ideas for your continue list are things like, where are we adding the most value? Are there activities or behaviours that promote our values or culture that we should continue doing? And what activities do you find most fulfilling? Now, if you want to perform your own start, stop, continue session, simply follow these steps with you acting as the meeting facilitator. One, on a wall or large whiteboard, create three columns labelled start, stop and continue. Two, ask each person to spend a minute writing on sticky notes answers in an actionable way to the question, what should we start doing? Three, do this again for the stop and continue columns. Four, ask each team member in turn to post their sticky notes on the three columns. Now explaining each one as they do so. Group related stickies into themes as you go and discard any that aren't in scope. It can be helpful if you as the facilitator Go first to model how this should be done to your team. Five, allocate each team member three votes to distribute to the actions they'd like to see implemented. Now they're free to spend these votes 
however they choose. They could spend all three votes on one sticky or distribute them across three stickies. Now note that you don't actually have to have three votes. You can have as many as you like. Just make sure that each team member has the same number of votes. Six, the output from the previous step will be a prioritized list of what your team should start, stop and continue doing. And finally, number seven, before wrapping up the session, ensure that each action has an owner and a deadline so that it gets done in a timely fashion. Finally, email the agreed actions to all of your team members. Now the model works best when you repeat it at regular intervals. So for example, every week or every month, and that way you're going to continuously improve over time. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of how you might use start, stop, continue. So firstly, for an agile retrospective. Now start, stop, continue is often used in these agile retrospectives. And these are regular post-mortems held by agile teams to reflect on what worked, what didn't, and why. They're usually held at the end of each Agile sprint or cycle. Now, the output from an Agile retrospective for a single sprint might look something like you see in the first image. So we're going to start using XYZ software to test all code. We're going to start ensuring all code is checked in at the end of the day. We're going to stop starting the daily stand-up meetings late, and we're going to continue pair programming. Now let's look at a second completely different example, this time to achieve a personal goal. So imagine that you want to lose weight gradually over time in a healthy way. Rather than go on a crash diet, you decide to use the start, stop, continue model each week to help you make regular improvements to your food and exercise choices over time. So the output from a single week's start, stop, continue session might look like this. Start exercising before work, start having healthy breakfasts on weekends, stop throwing your diet out the window when the weekend arrives, and finally continue bringing a homemade lunch to the office every day. Now there are several advantages and disadvantages associated with start, stop, continue. The advantages are it gives everyone in the team the same opportunity to provide feedback, the feedback is action oriented, allowing you to use it immediately to improve. And finally, over time, the model can improve quality, reduce waste and increase employee retention. Now, in terms of disadvantages, then the model is inward looking and doesn't prompt you to consider wider issues, such as what industry trends are emerging or what other teams outside your organization are doing. Finally, the model doesn't provide techniques to generate new ideas to add to each list or each column. So in summary, Start, Stop, Continue is a simple feedback tool that can help you continually improve over time. And it works both at an individual and team level. Now, although the tool is straightforward and simple to understand, it can lead to meaningful improvement over the long term. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon.